I have joining me to talk about the rising insecurity, a security and intelligence consultant, Abu Adams. Good to have you join us. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be with you this afternoon. So I want to begin from where um, one of the, what one of the respondents said in, in that report that we just played. Um, he talked about being in the nation's capital since 1999 and that he's quite disappointed at his state of security at the moment because he, according to him, he's not seen something like this before. Um, if, the, if we can have this kind of security threat in the nation's capital, what does that say um, about uh, security, uh, the state of security in general in the country? Well, I mean, uh, it is obvious that um, virtually everywhere is a threat. Uh, I mean, it's a target now for uh, the terrorists. And um, if you look at... Uh, uh, what has been going on, uh, from time to time, they continue to gain new grounds. They are the one gaining new grounds by way of attack. Uh, massive one for that matter. Remember the attack on um, uh, security forces in Niger. Uh, you remember, I mean, the Kuje is still fresh. And um, the aftermath of Kuje, of course, is uh, certainly going to be Abuja and such other cities that they think they can make a maximum impact. Uh, don't also forget that uh, it's like uh, those of them that are, are real terrorist groups, not just bandits, have um, uh, heightened their, their, their ransom if, if they have to release. They now talk of hundreds of millions of 50, 20, and that kind of thing. So, so far, they have been having a, a massive resources to acquire more um, uh, uh, armaments and then carry out uh, their dastardly act. So that uh, virtually everywhere is, uh, is their target. is not something, again, that anybody can debate. Uh, even the forests, they are there. They, they, they are not safe. They are not just moving anyhow. The roads are not safe. And so... Um, we are, we are, we are where we are now. There's, there's hardly anywhere that is not uh, threatened, so to say. And let's talk about intelligence. Um, I think it was the deputy speaker of the House of Reps. I'm trying to remember who that was. Um, that talked about the fact that about 40 intelligence reports were received before the attack on Kuje Correctional uh, Facility. What is the problem here? What are the gaps that you notice? Because again, we, we, I think the, the Minister of Interior also talked about it and that he mentioned that there was no willingness to act. But for you as a security consultant, an intelligence consultant, um, what do you think the gap is when it comes to intelligence? Uh, I think um, for, for intelligence, uh, I don't think in this war that we are, we are, we are facing, there is a so much of um, uh, inadequate intelligence. I think what we are, we are having uh, in most cases uh, is the fact that uh, intelligence not being properly uh, utilized uh, as at when a uh, due. Don't forget that uh, one of the key factors that is central to intelligence is um, timeliness. Timeliness of uh, acquisition of that intelligence, timeliness of uh, uh, the consumer, that is the stakeholder, whoever that may be, maybe military, maybe government, to make use of it appropriately. So if you have um, uh, uh, intelligence and you, you say the, the tasking uh, organizations, uh, uh, if they don't have the capacity, for instance, capacity in terms of uh, personnel, capacity in terms of uh, training, capacity in terms of uh, technology, capacity in terms of um, uh, even uh, motivation uh, to move simultaneously. I mean, uh, you might not use that intelligence to, for, for the purpose because intelligence in its definition is that kind of information that is processed that can be used for security operations. And so when uh, the, the, the facilities to use them are not there, it do not give you... Let me ask you, because now that we have information in the open, I think in the last video that was released by the, the bandits, they talked about the plans to breach security in other parts of the country. How should we be reacting to this and putting that information to use? I think uh, what we should do now uh, is that... Um, I've said, this, I've said this several times. Let me, let me just uh, go straight to the issue. That as far as this country is, is today, 
I don't see anything in modern, uh, you know, uh, war, anything far from the fact that uh, we are at war because uh, various places in this country, there are threats and there are attacks virtually on a daily basis. I, even after this, you have heard about the attack in uh, Kaduna uh, uh, the other time, uh, I think that, I mean, uh, two nights ago, and, and several other places that are even unreported. So if you agree that we are in a war situation, what do you do when you are in a war situation? And of course, what we should be doing is, is that uh, we, we provide massive resources mobilize the citizenry uh, in terms of recruitment and training, and in terms of um, uh, involvement of the uh, civilian population with the political will to do the needful all the time. Because while this is going on, uh, uh, politics seems to be taking the center stage uh, in our country, yet the seems, country it, is it, it not does seem as though we have now um, moved on from the security crisis and, and facing the politics ahead of the 2023 elections. We'll see how um, government continues to respond to this crisis. Thank you so much for talking to us. Security and intelligence consultant, Adam Sabu.